Welcome, welcome. Everybody can, everyone can hear me. And uh, hope you're having a good Friday. Um, you got lost. You have uh, found yourself in the CG Spectrum's Twitch channel. And uh, you are currently watching the, the illustration block of uh, CG Spectrum's Twitch channel. So if you are looking for those uh, WWE, you know, wrestler cooking tips or something like that, whatever Twitch stream that was, you pressed the wrong button. All right. I am sorry to tell you. Um, I'm going to be painting a uh, robot lady and the head of a severed fish monster thing, warrior, gladiator person and uh saying random nonsense for the next two hours so uh yeah welcome oh yes yes you know uh fun fact the george foreman grill was supposed to be called the hulk hogan grill but he turned it down and he's still kicking himself to this day I, I wouldn't make that up. I can't make that up. He had his own reality show and he talked about it. <laughs> like he would be like many times richer had he said yes. But uh, I don't know. George Foreman girl sounds a lot better. Whatever. Now you can go tell your parents, hey, Ma, guess what? <laughs> All right. So let's let's jump into this. Hey, Ma! <laughs> All right. Um, so where I left off last week was messing around with the values for the head of the creature and uh, playing around loosely with a color scheme for it on the layer with that on it. Um, and, you know, I typically don't work this way. I typically will just direct paint something and massage the values as I go. Um, but I figure for the any concept art students that might be watching this, uh, this is how you guys learn how to do it. Um, in your in your intro courses, like building up the values first and then applying color through various blend mode tactics, uh, whereas when students come to my advanced illustration class, I just tell them, like, we just, we wipe that out and just try to push them to paint directly um, and work their values out, you know, while they work, while they do the piece in the actual painting. So um, it helps to train your eye to see both value and color if you do it all in one as opposed to separately but this has its merits it has its its worth so i figure let's let's dive into this uh see what's cooking so we're only what eight hours into this so uh eight hours my god you're not you're not done yet i'm Sorry, no, I'm not. Um, but I was thinking, uh, that's a lot of it's a lot of hardware that she's got on her. So I'm thinking that she should probably be like more Android. This should be more Android than kind, you know, more Android than Iron Man body armor kind of thing. So. Um, and I, I absolutely despise, I don't know, despise is too hard of a word. I really don't like it when it just feels like a cop out. Um, like a person in a big suit of armor is either a robot or they're in a big suit of armor. They're either an Android or they're 
in an Iron Man type costume, right? Which makes me think that this is somebody that was a multiple amputee. And I, and I feel that makes me feel sad for that person. Like, you either did this intentionally to yourself or you were in a horrible accident and you woke up and you had giant claw hands with a electric axe coming out of your, you know, your forearm and you had uh, big purple thighs. Some people ask for it. Some people don't. I don't know. I don't know what the future would hold. What if somebody chooses to have a, an Apple device embedded in their skull? No, oh, that's coming. Know it. I'll be the guy going, told you. Stupid. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's, I want to play with, let me find the right here. I want to just experiment with this for a second. Um, putting this kind of line in. to show the division between her actual body I know I'm not doing this on the proper layers this is more just an experiment to see if I like the direction and uh Um, did I see Lin Lindley? Hello. Um, so I, I recorded your feedback. I have to upload it. Uh, really great job on that maquette. Uh, I had a couple of little notes uh, for you uh, for that before you go ahead and finish off your, your, your final drawing. So if you're still here, um, I you know wanted to just say nice job. Nice job on that. Um, I didn't have any, I didn't have a lot of really long winded, uh, advice other than to just update the maquette and then finish your, like, I had a couple issues with the musculature of the, of it. So you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. <sighs> It's off.
So I hope everybody's day is going well. Uh, if you're a student at CG Spectrum, if you have any questions or concerns about why it's taking me so long to finish this piece, uh, please, you know, leave a message, leave a question. Uh, or if you have any, any, what are you working on? Tell me what you're working on. Um, are you doing any of the challenges? current uh, art challenges that have, that have been going on. How's that working out for you if you are? And seeing some really cool stuff with, like all of a sudden my, my whole Slack feed is like full of rats. I don't know what that's about. I haven't read the, uh, the directions for the, for the challenge, but it's like a bunch of sci-fi out rats. So gerbils or whatever that about if you don't know what I'm talking about the uh, the school is as weekly concept art challenges I don't know if there's prizes involved or something but it looks pretty cool worth checking out if you haven't already When is Scott starting with his 2D animation tutorials? Um, in like 10 minutes, man. It's on the other channel. You missed it. I, I honestly don't know. I don't know who Scott is. Is that, uh, is that, I'm guessing that's somebody that works here. So there's like over a hundred mentors. So sorry. There is a full schedule or the uh, the Twitch stuff that the school does on the school's Twitch channel, Twitch channel. So feel free to go take a look at that for any and all information. Okay. Um, it's I'm I'm probably gonna start letting people know you are not in Scott's Twitch stream just in case it lets people know this in case just in case I probably didn't update this in time. If it says that this is the animation hour or block, uh, sorry to let you know, there will be no motion tweening in this class. Uh, this is all just sloppy pixel movements. Okay, so uh, And to think of the connection points between the this gauntlet and her actual arm like if there's if it's more of like a sleeve 
that her amputated arm slides into. Um, you know, that, that straps on. Maybe there is a strap. No. It's probably a little late to be thinking about real-world physics involved in something like this, but I don't think anybody really thinks about the real-world physics involved with somebody running around in a hunking suit of metal that's like an additional 400 pounds on top of their own body weight, moving around gracefully in it. But, you know, that's why it's science fiction. Probably would have been a better idea to organize all of these layers for starting the stream, but who's got that kind of time? So if there's anybody out there actually watching this, uh, give me a, a thumbs up or down uh, bodysuit or like robotic leg. Which one do you think? I'll just toggle it off and on like gears of a robotic leg or bodysuit. Robotic leg, all right. Thank you, Lily. Right. That. This. I'm going to eventually have to just take time after this stream and just clean up all of these layers. Make sure that I'm rendering, my rendering is all in the same spot instead of like mess of stuff all over the place because I am, uh, I'm totally going against my own rules that I tell my students about naming all their layers and making sure that everything is tight and in the correct spot. The last thing I want is for somebody to tell somebody to clean up their layers and then have them throw this episode back in my face and go, actually, April blah blah blah, 2000. 21, 3.50 p.m. 
here it comes. So when I do photo shoots for for jobs, um, you know, this is for anybody that's watching this for the first time and may have not seen the previous versions or previous episodes of this process. Um, I <clears throat> I will do photo shoots for for illustration commissions and uh then i'm just left over like i take i used to take like hundreds of shots uh for a job and uh pick two or three out of that set and then be left with hundreds of images that go unused uh and that's basically where this this project is starting Help if I actually show the reference, but um, like this started off here with this woman in the the leather the leather stuff and junks. So this was a fun shoot because I learned a lot. This was I think this was from like one of my first book covers, and I had to hire a professional photographer, and I had to. Do to direct the model and tell her what I wanted to to do but like at this point she this lady was a professional model for tons of romance novels um so she knew exactly what to do without me ever having to say anything i said you're you are a uh a witch or something like that some kind of what was the her, no, it was this. I think the story was the woman. It was a uh, the daughter of Satan, and she had flame powers because every woman in paranormal fantasy has flame powers. God. And uh, she teams up with a cop to fight crime couldn't make so uh i <laughs> told her that and she's like got it and uh she gives me all these really great she gave me like, so many great poses so um when you're working if you're ever working with models or you're asking somebody to pose for you uh your student work anything like that it's always great to direct your model tell them what you want them to do explain the process for them you know um because if you tell them what you want them to do you're the director right tell them what you want and they will give it to you hopefully you don't want to you don't want to just say okay stand there and look cool no you got to tell them what you want Hope that makes sense.
Oh yes, the devil's daughter. Because like, it's not enough to uh, to be like evil demon or something like that. I guess after a few millennia, you get bored and you're like, you know, start having some kids. I hope they don't grow up and team up with a human. Go out there and try to kill my creations, kill all my other demons. That would upset me. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird stuff. It was a successful franchise, it was a successful series of books, as you can tell by the uh, number of movies and TV spinoffs. So, like, we really don't even need to mention the title of the book. We already know it, right? So if we're gonna go robotic leg, then we don't need all those all that thigh meat. Really just use the metal casing around the leg. And have a lot of that just be engine parts. <sighs> See what I have. I don't know what the rules are for dragging in photo reference. I guess it's got to be my own photo reference, right? So, I have random photos of engine parts from my own car. I do. I do. I mean, I could technically just call up images of a Mercedes and say that I drive that, right? That that was my car reference. That would be a lie. That's right. Um, so I'm scouring my internet, my, not my internet, my computer right now. So just bear with me. I have... Uh, pictures that I took from a, an auto show, which are my own, so I can use those. That reference from before. Um, 
So whenever I'm <clears throat> whenever I'm doing uh, robots or anything like that, anything anything mechanical, I I take a ton of photographs of um, I take a ton of photographs of mechanical things, cars and and, and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Because I never know when I might want to take a piece uh, of something and uh, actually you can't really see what I'm doing because I'm not in that right image. So I like to take photos of stuff like this because uh, I can take this engine and move it from its context here. Let's see, Let's lasso tool it real quickly. I don't know how your other fancy mentors do stuff, but this is down and dirty way of getting something that I want. If you're not familiar with what you're looking at right now, this is called Quick Mask. Um, there's a lot of different ways to select objects and uh, remove them from their background in Photoshop. Pen tool being probably the most methodical, cleanest way to go. But if you need something quick and dirty, have to be perfect and always use a quick mask okay
So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to uh, to ask. You're not disturbing me. I can I can talk and draw at the same time. I know that's uh, it's one of those holy moly kind of things, but uh, otherwise I I don't know if there's actually anybody watching this or if I'm just kind of alone in a room talking to myself. Or you're just mesmerized by these mad skills. You're just like afraid to say something. Either way. Lindley, yeah, I um, I knew exactly where I what I wanted to do with it. I wanted the legs. I mean, like if I if we're that's why I, in the beginning when I was saying, uh, should she have like robotic suit? Should it be a armored suit or robotic legs idea? I thought, well, let's double down and make those uh, truly robotic legs and put engines in them so like if she's got roller skates uh or roller blades for feet then the energy source powering those thighs are legit engines right so if she throttles those things up and comes after you you're you're pretty much screwed right um so uh now comes the heavy paint over part of it where we try to uh, mask all this so that somebody at Ford Motors doesn't spit their coffee out onto their computer screen going, that's my engine. I, did, I designed that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Um, okay. Uh, welcome, welcome to the uh, welcome to the stream. This is the illustration block of CG Spectrum's Twitch channel. Um, I am I am the host, host Wilkerson, and uh, yeah. So you welcome. You came in at the at a at a good time because there was really nothing to see before. It's kind of like kind of boring. So, let's see, there's light source coming from behind that, so we can do something like this. But right now, I want to keep it all grayscale. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start cleaning up these layers as I move through it. Um, try to get it to be messy. Roller bleeding goldfish decapitator. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, that's the, the cool thing about... Um, Taking a reference like, 
like let's say this trim of this uh, Range Rover Evoke um, or one of the other, let's see, let me grab another reference. Uh, let's see. I really like what I, I really like doing stuff like this when it comes to find, find a proper reference. Um, like, so let's say for her gauntlet, if I didn't feel like rendering or just making it up from my head, like a, a, a whole gauntlet. Um, I could take a reference. Let me see if I can find it. Find something that would work. Hmm. A, just this whole grill, right? Take this whole, th well, not the whole grill, good part of it, and the hood of the car, copy it. Bring this in, find out where I paint. Paste this in here. Now I'm just looking at just the just the silhouette of this, right? Um, And to see, find something interesting in this shape that could potentially work for. Um, and it's really just warping some stuff around, stretching things. Playing with the lighting or seeing, I like how the light plays off of the metal on this. So we've got the, the, the cool spotlight, all of these little other reflected lights from the ceiling, all the track lighting and all that stuff. And then there's a warmer uh, light, which was on the hood of the car, but now could potentially be a side fill light. Like if I'm gonna use, uh, if I'm gonna use this, or for the purposes of doing a little paint over and just drop this right into the forearm of this character and voila but to have something really cool looking going on and stuff Let's see that trimming so that right up okay. so then Figure this gauntlet is gonna have to be a little like robust. I feel like it would have to be um, to to kind of contain or or house or or power a lightsaber axe thing. 
right? So uh, probably some of the most fun aspects of doing a lot of different designs or uh, sci-fi costume designs and things like that is thinking about how the functionality of it, how does this work? So, like, if, uh, if I didn't tell you that this is the bumper of a Range Rover, you probably wouldn't know, because it's been completely taken out of context, altered, and adjusted to my needs. So, better like scale. And this process is more exploratory than, than anything. Like some of this might work and it's finding that subtle blend, toggling things off and on. Looking for unique shapes. I wanted this car. I really did. And I was told, no, it doesn't have any trunk space. You have a family. <laughs> it's true, it doesn't have any trunk space. Look it up. It's cool to drive, but uh don't have any don't have any kids because uh you will have to trade it in. Somebody's, somebody's watching this and has a, a Range Rover at home going, hey, line. <laughs> but. This in there. Oh, actually, what if there is no fist? What if the whole thing is just one big axe gauntlet thing? Yeah, that's my professional term for it, axe gauntlet. Um, If you're getting dizzy watching me toggle things off and on, I'm so sorry. That's just how I work. Like I'm looking for shapes. And I'm like as I see it, I start cleaning stuff up. And I'm supposed to be using damaging the Nice trims and stuff. All right, try to carve out a little bit of that musculature of the fo of a forearm, kind of, sort of. Right. Then I have these other engine bits 
Imaging bits. But that, could I use that in its current space? Oh, look at this. Hmm. And out of context, can we, what can we angle at here? It's kind of like grocery shopping. Like you're trying to look for the right ingredients to make a uh, supercharged looking gauntlet weapon look extra dope, right? Did you go to CG school? Um, no, I, 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 I am one of the, hi, my name is Eric Wilkerson. I'm one of the instructors at CG school. Um, so I teach both the concept art and the advanced illustration courses for CG Spectrum. If you uh, would like to see more of my work, uh, you can go to ericwilkersonart.com or you can uh, check out my Instagram page. It's Eric Wilkerson Art. Uh, smash that follow button. I'll know if you didn't. No, I, I won't know. Yeah, that answer. Like as the piece starts to evolve, I wanted to try to do as much of this in real time as possible so that um, and what i what I'm enjoying is that like the metallic finish that I did for the rendering on the breastplate matches up with the rendering that's on the on the gauntlet on the on the forearm so um. I want to keep that whole kind of brushed metal, uh, you know, with the glossy highlights and all that stuff going throughout the form, just to set it apart from the scaly fish scaly look that I'm going to end up giving the, the fish head. Um, but yeah, so this is I'm, I'm happy with it so far. Um, but I kind of feel always more something. Let's see where else, what else I can. Help to save the file. That would help. Okay.
you guys ever get a chance to go to an auto show bring a bring a camera and like take plenty of photos because it's there's so much great information there for potential usage uh for a robot inspiration and all that or if you're just out walking around and you're in a parking lot and you see somebody's like a cool motorcycle just out on the street like take a picture of it like the engine bits and pieces um anything that can inspire you to develop something later on um i really like just this random piece i don't know what this is on a motorcycle i guess it's whatever starts it i don't know i don't know how motorcycles work but we take that photo from the auto show um and drop it in here scale it down i don't know if this is going to work but i'm going to just mess with it and see we want to desaturate it stays consistent with everything else and then Play with the levels on it. Values right. Um, I know. You've probably seen people photo bash stuff for uh, buildings and environment designs and all that stuff. And, uh, and you could do the same thing for, for uh, mechanical things as well. This a little seamless. And I'm eventually going to come in and paint over all of this, but I want it to, I want to do as much as I possibly can in the blending stage of these photos.
I think that's in a good spot to then go over top of it. Other stuff. So that's four compounded bits of reference slapped together. And Figure this where this headlight is that I'm painting over right now. I feel like I could just go straight Tron Legacy with it. And uh, I swear to God, if anybody says, What's Tron Legacy? I'm through your computer. Through your computer. And then, you know, give it that neon, that neon glow. And then that neon glow would kind of, ooh, that could blend. So we could say that. Blending that something like that. I don't like that. Is it more book? Sword? Oh. That's, that's that's a good pen. Not a pen.
Uh, Sanu uh, Shetty is asking, uh, saying he, you feel tired sometimes chasing goals and career. Any word of advice for beginners? Um, yeah, don't give up. <clears throat> it's going to be hard. Anything worth doing, anything worth pursuing is going to be hard. And there's going to be a lot of competition. But that doesn't mean... Uh, you know, give up if it doesn't happen for you a year after trying, a year after beginning, or five years after beginning. Um, you know, I went to school for for four years to learn what I know, but you know, I've been at this for twenty years now, and I learn something new every year. You know, um, I'm still learning, and. That's that's a part of being an artist, whether regardless of what medium, uh, what discipline, <clears throat> you're always going to learn something new. You're always going to have to grow artistically. And if you get tired and frustrated doing something that you're passionate about, then it's not really a passion. So I would say go find something that you can do that's easier and that will make you money that doesn't leave you sad or frustrated or physically or mentally or emotionally drained um, but if you are in it for the long haul if you really want this you have to ask yourself if this is something you really truly want and if it is don't give up that's it Yeah. Um so much of this, so much of this career is right place, right time, and having the perfect portfolio or a good enough portfolio. And not being a jerk. And if you have like all of that combined, then you know good things will happen. And I've I've had my fair share of setbacks and failures and times where I thought this is not gonna happen. I might as well apply for that graphic designer position and just play with fonts all day and just call it a all a lifetime but that would have made me absolutely miserable i know that there's somebody out there plenty of people out there working jobs that they hate because they don't think they can do any better or they don't know where to look to even try to do So, a lot, and I know how emotionally draining that can be, or overwhelming, especially when you start seeing people you might have graduated with from high school, you know, have careers and drive fancy cars and have nice houses and 2.5 kids and you know, you're working with a cracked version of Photoshop in your parents' <laughs> dining room. Uh, hey, been there. They're done that. So, doesn't come overnight. I think that's, that's what throws people off, is they think, I'm going to be a rock star in nine months. I'm going to be a rock star in a year. Maybe. Probably not.
but you will be better than you were a year ago, better than you were six months ago, if you keep going. I like the scythe idea. Yeah, guys, if you guys have questions, stuff the stuff that is sitting on your brain uh about school about art about whatever you know, feel free to ask i am i am not just a pretty face rendering robotic parts okay i am i am here to answer questions Except for how many licks it would take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop. Because the world may never know. Everything other than that, I can answer. While painting. Because I like to show off. I really wish I could play some Tron Legacy soundtrack right now. Get, that, get some Daft Punk going here, but... Twitch and their legal... Cursed legal... Rules... And junks. Tatum, yes, actually you do. I mean, it depends. If you're on one freelance job that's paying you like, you know, it, it, it depends on your cost of living, honestly. If you're working on a freelance job that pays you a thousand bucks and your, your rent, or your mortgage or whatever is only $300, then you know you're covered. Your, your bills are covered for a couple months, right? Um... Or if you do two or three jobs for a thousand dollars each, then you know you're you're pretty set for a good half of the year, a good portion of the year, right? But if you let's say you live somewhere with a high cost of living, that thousand dollars doesn't even cover half your rent. Then yes, you need to have more than one freelance job going at the same time, preferably more than one source of income, and. Uh, and if you can juggle more than one project at a time, learn those time management skills and um, just don't miss your deadlines. That's all. Just don't miss your deadline.
continue to mess with mess around with this. Uh, see what works. I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna take out that <sighs> Tron Legacy Light Glow thing. Go with something a little bit more. More of a trim. This is the, the, the challenging part about this is turning this around in your head. And anybody that's had to do a, a character design with that they didn't start in the program knows how hard it is to sit here and say okay what angle should this be or that be um And also might realize that you don't need certain pieces. Some stuff doesn't need to be on there. Get rid of it. It's going to evolve as you move through it. We worked out part of the arm. We'll get back to it later. I want to get these. I want to get this thigh meat popping. I'll probably just flip it. Quick way. Ali T is asking, what do you think about having a day job and making a transition into full-time art slowly? Um, I mean, okay, so you're talking about uh, a day job that is not art really. Um, it's a smart move unless you want to stay in your parents' home for the rest of your life um, or like living off of somebody's sofa, sleeping on somebody's sofa or whatever the situation might be. Um, do what you have to do to survive. Uh, there's no shame in making money, you know? Um, and, you know, there's there are people that work as full-time artists um, that are not happy. Just because you're a full-time artist doesn't mean that you are a rock star working on award-winning amazing projects you could be you know doing a nine to five job for some company that doesn't appreciate you or what you do or what you or what you can bring to the table um 
know, but it could be like mind numbing, soul crushing work versus having a day job, making your, making your money, being able to think about the stuff that you want to do and then going home at the end of the day and then doing it, you know, creating the kind of work that you want to create and selling it directly online through like Etsy or Patreon or something like that and making money directly uh, and selling stuff directly to a fan base. There's thousands of people out there in the world that do that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about it like it's a, it's a bad thing to have a day job and then be trying to make it as a, as a, as an artist or any kind of artist. Um, yeah, I did a, I don't know what country you're from, Ali, but I did a two and a half year stint at Walmart after I got out of college. I wasn't ready. My portfolio just was not where it needed to be. And, um, it took a while, but I, I, I worked the night shift at that job so that I prayed that I didn't run into anybody I knew from high school. <laughs> you know, if, whenever they would roll through, if ever I ever saw somebody, I would rip that blue vest off so fast and pretend I was shopping. But um, every night I would come, every morning I would come home and I would stay up and I would work on my portfolio, apply for jobs, you know, submit my resume, submit my demo reel, um, constantly hustling. And I eventually found a staff position you know, doing what I like to do, but it took a while. So, you know, don't give up, but don't, don't beat yourself up. If you have to apply for that retail job or apply for some kind of employment that you may not like. Now the problem, the challenge will be don't get comfortable with the day job that you don't like to do and end up changing your lifestyle like moving into an apartment or buying a car or something like that uh where you, now you need to depend on that income in order to survive because if that ends or you decide to quit and the full-time art thing doesn't happen as fast as you want it to then you're going to freak out because now you're not going to have money to pay your bills and then you're going to end up right back where you started in your parents' basement or wherever that might be, wherever you might be. So be patient and you know, work on your stuff. Um, any advice for people that don't know if concept art or illustration is the path to go? Um, Blasphemer, aren't you like a 3D guy? Or... I don't know if if you're the same person that's like not even aren't you like a film editor or something? What 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 are you in are you are you a CG Spectrum student blasphemer? Like what 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 program are you currently studying in? What department are you in? Ah, you had the intro course a while back. Well, so the school has a whole multiple articles actually on the difference between concept art and illustration. Um, it's worth going to the school's website and uh, reading up on that so that you are informed about the decision that you would be making. Okay. So there's, there's, there's nothing worse than paying a bunch of money and not knowing what you're getting yourself into. Um, or thinking that it's something that it's not. All right. Um, but I can't tell you 
uh, you know, which way to go. But uh, you, if you don't know which way you want to go, ask yourself this. Do you like to do individual things like do characters or environments or props? Do you want to do all that stuff separately? Or do you want to put it all together into a single narrative image that tells, you know, that, that could sell a product? Because if you take, if I take this character design that I'm doing right now, it's basically what it is. But if I take this and I work out and I render the entire environment, stadium and the people cheering in the background and the flower petals dropping at her feet and then, you know, show this decapitated body flapping around on the ground still clutching its weapon and then drool dripping out of this fish's mouth that's a full-blown illustration now if that's something that it sounds exciting to you then that's illustration if you just want to do the individual things the character design the environment design the props the weapons all that stuff and then maybe do turnaround designs for all that stuff and maybe model it, do some light 3D modeling, that's concept. So no, that's the path. It's like you either want to tell a story with your art or you want to do individual pieces. So, you know, I, I know in my heart, I'm an illustrator. I, I, I uh, but the, an illustrator has to be all of those things. An illustrator has to be a concept artist, a director, a cinematographer, and a painter. You've got to design it, you've got to tell the story, you've got to light the image, and then you've got to know how to paint. All four of those things. And not a lot of people want to, though there's a lot of people that want to do that, but not a lot of people are good at it. So, or good enough to get consistent work. So that's why school has a program where you know we teach you what you need to know in order to get your portfolio to a point where you are and be competitive um, in that in that industry uh, I hope that answers your question and this is where he, he responds back with uh, my internet cut out. Could you say all that again? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Zen. Zen can guard is asking what advice could you give if this kind of skill is not really appreciated in the mainstream industry in my country I don't see many opportunities to do this as a main job but I would love to um, being an illustrator is not uh, something that is country specific if you want to work for clients in North America then send your portfolio to clients in North America um, you know, I, I, I do a lot of work with, um, you know, publishers that hire illustrators from all over the world. Okay. So it's not something where, like, if you're looking for a staff art job as an illustrator, uh, and you don't see something like that in your country, then you might have to relocate. That's just reality. I mean, there's like... Artists do that for staff art jobs all the time, especially in concept art. 
you might find yourself bouncing all over the world um, if you want that lifestyle. But if you don't, if you want to stay close to family, um, and that's I think that's part of the the appeal. I think for some people is they think, well, I'm going to travel the world and I'm going to go to this country or this state and I'm going to bounce around and work here for a little while and work there for a little while. But uh, if you don't want that, then it's probably best to find opportunities that uh, will allow you to stay in your home country, in your hometown, but still work for you know major studios, major companies. But it really just depends on how good your work is and if it's you know as on par with what a client uh the kind of work a client would purchase of uh, what they what they what they what they commission um you know so take a look at companies you would love to work for find out the names of the illustrators that work with them compare your work to theirs and see does your work hold up if it doesn't, then you've got some work to do. Yeah, well, I mean, even before the pandemic, all freelance illustration is remote. So I send a file and I go to bed. <laughs> you know, send an invoice. Um, this The pandemic has really, hasn't altered my life really at all because I wasn't leaving this room. I wasn't leaving my, my, my house, my basement before the pandemic. Um, you know, that might sound sad to somebody I'm like, oh my God, you don't get out of the house. Well, that's a choice. I choose to work from home. Um, some people thrive on working in a group setting with like, other people and didn't. So I found, uh, employment that allowed me to stay home and talk to you fine people from wherever you are in the galaxy. So that's that. I hope that answers your question. Um, I've lost my layers. I don't know what layer I'm. we give her a pauldron is that what those things are called a pauldron Ooh, that'd be cool how funky looking is that shape Black Heart Gaming is saying, I'm really thinking about coming here for game design and animation and 3D modeling, but mostly game design. Right on. Uh, what is an other... Um, so there's game design. There's... Uh, so apparently... F f uh, compositing, film compositing is a, is a big... Uh, has a there's a big demand right now for for compositors if you want to play with programs like nuke I think it's nuke and um, like visual effects work I mean if you know 3d modeling and animation but you want to get into some uh, visual effects work there's a lot of jobs for that right now Apparently, and there's there's a, a teacher uh, within the school that teaches uh, compositing for like film and animation. Uh, that's also something that you might want to look into. Um, you know, because there are like immediate there's immediate need for that. Like the the film industry didn't slow down. It didn't stop. It, they just they figured out a way around the pandemic. But you know you you'd be in the process you'd be the person doing the post production work 
you know, after the movie's already been made. So, like, you know, think of all the Netflix sci-fi films that come out annually. There's usually two good ones. At at you know, at least. So, no, probably at most. Anyway, whatever. But uh, you know, it's you could be that person that's adding the explosions and the laser blasts and all that stuff to things. So worth worth looking into. But anyway. Yeah. Mind mind. After this, after this stream, I'm going to come back in here and adjust all of these layers so I know what stuff is. This is... Aha, there it is. But also, I would say to anybody that is looking to have a career in the arts is to not underestimate the importance of social media right now. Um, there's a lot of people being discovered by just posting the stuff that they love, paint or draw or design uh, on social media. And, you know, you don't even have to have a huge following if you do something that uh, a lot of people respond to and it goes viral you don't know what could potentially happen for you for your life um, I'm speaking from experience so no matter what it is you guys decide to do Make sure it's something you love to do. Like, like if, if you're if you're not aware, so uh, NASA sent a, a new Mars rover to to the Red Planet, and uh, you know it's been doing all kinds of surveys and flying around and doing all this stuff. Um, and if you watch interviews with the scientists that you know the the rocket scientists and stuff that designed and you know did all the calculations and, and and prepared for years for this moment in their lifetime in their in their in in their careers they are so pumped they are so excited and and you you, you see these interviews with them they can't they they would talk your whole face off about all the work and and love and time that they put into it that is passion there's this one lady that was just like shaking she was so happy that's the kind of job you want you want you want to have you want to work for somebody or do the kind of work that when you wake up in the morning you go i can't believe i get to do this this is so awesome you know um and that's that's going to be different for everybody that's going to be different for everybody everybody's going to have a different awesome but find find out what it what yours is and uh go after it heart and soul is if if you could achieve half the happiness in your profession that those nasa scientists you know felt when they were high-fiving each other uh over that rover touch landing on mars it's all about all right guys so i added some uh robotic lunch meat to her thighs uh changed up the gauntlet on her uh 
on her arm, gave her more of a luxury, luxury edition. Um, yeah, Lindley, no problem. Uh, Blackheart is asking, don't people with any of the schools and classes for getting jobs, don't they need to do a lot of research to make sure the work they've done, not them accidentally? Um, I mean, if you're asking if companies take the time to see if your if your portfolio is full of plagiarized work no i don't think companies will take that kind of time but it'll it'll show through when you actually sit down to do the job and you can't um and then eventually you'll get called out for it all right anyway um my son knows that it is five o'clock and uh he is screaming through the cat door in my basement, uh, top of the basement steps. Dada! So, uh, so long. <laughs> uh, you guys have a good weekend, and I will see you guys uh, uh, same time next week um, to play with these lunch meat engine thighs. I'm going to put some glowy bits in there next week. All right? So talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye.